So I've had early access to Total War Troy for a few days now. Got a key and I've been playing it quite fastidiously, learning the mechanics. And I've gotten to the point where I have a really decent grip of all the fundamentals and I'm starting to push the game and see what I can get away with. And this is going to be an example of that because I can play the first battle in Troy as Achilles, here it is, and pull off four losses to get the win. And you might be thinking that there's something seriously wrong there, and you might be right, maybe you're right, but it isn't just one thing, it's a lot of different things coming together to permit that and some of them are to do with me and how I am <laughs> but there's definitely some things about the game as well and it's not just this game it also applies to other Total War games that have similar design elements like having heroes represented as one entity well, that's the word that you see a lot entity so I'm bringing Achilles runners which are high-speed infantry that are good on the flank I've also got javelinmen and those are the three units that do 99% of the work here because with Achilles I've got one guy with a lot of HP so that means enemy units can deliver damage to him efficiently because only a few men can attack him at once and if your positioning is really good you can potentially even reduce that to zero because I'm not sure about Romance Mode and Three Kingdoms or the Warhammer games which I've not played but you can attack units and kill a few guys and pull out of that fight in a manner that isn't actually that far-fetched if Achilles is actually really fast, tireless then maybe he could pull off those kinds of feats if he's a superior athlete, a superhuman, a demigod but in this game you can run up to the corner of units and tap them and take out a few guys and then pull out with no damage taken so not only do no men die but no damage is taken and I should describe what just happened I ran Achilles behind the unit of slingers, the solitary unit of slingers which is their only skirmishing unit in this fight and that forced them to skirmish mode towards my other units and then I took Achilles off the job whoops and whoops yeah I'm messing around with the fast forward slow down controls there so I took Achilles off the job of chasing the slingers and had my runners do it and they're my highest speed unit along with the javelinmen and the runners and the javelinmen have a speed of 55 which I don't think is matched by any of these units we're up against. Units that have that high speed and that trait swift footed, they are in a class of their own. It's like having cavalry when the enemy has no cavalry, that's what it's like. These are like the cavalry units of Troy. And something else that I really need to go over, I've got each of these three units which have their own special element that I need to be able to tap into and use in conjunction. I've got each of them in a group, so I've literally got all of these different tools at my fingertips because of groups. I don't need to click around, I don't need to keep screen space in my mind. I can just select whichever one I want with a key press using groups. If you don't use groups, in Total War games from Shogun 2 onwards 
you're not actually using the controls. It's a bit like playing an immersive sim, like Dishonored or Deus Ex or Far Cry or any other game like Doom, which has weapons for specific purposes bound to keys. Even in other RTSs like Command & Conquer, you want to be making groups for units that you're going to be using for tasks. So make sure you do that. Shogun 2 has an implementation that makes it awkward, but in Three Kingdoms at least, the grouping system is really good. And once again, in Troy, the grouping system is flawless. No complaints whatsoever. So what I'm doing here is baiting units out and defeating in detail where possible. So I'm using Achilles, who is pretty much impervious if he's managed properly. Like, see there, he's sort of getting stuck and surrounded and there's lunges happening on him. So you need to pull him out when that happens. When any of your heroes get stuck in a mosh pit, surrounded and encircled, you need to get them to just elbow nudge their way the fuck out of there and then start attacking units from the outside. Because when they're in that situation, they're going to be taking damage over and over and over again. The ratio of damage dealt to damage taken is not favourable. You want to be in the open, running and tapping the edges of units with Achilles or Hector or any other hero like this. And, and it is definitely funny. You've got one guy running around, dictating the pace of the fight, determining the course of the battle, because in this fight, with these tactics, everything starts with Achilles, with the hero. He's the one that ran in and forced the slingers out. He's the one that runs into these units, kills a guy or two, and then runs away in the chase. And then that brings my other units into play, like the Javelinman, which can get possibly a really good clean volley of Javelins, which they have about 20 of. Something like that, 15 or 20. So that's a decent amount of ammo. And they can get 15 or 20 kills per volley. And, he, and Achilles can kill four or five guys if he gets a really good lunge like that. So that's something that I'm doing as well. I'm passively doing damage with Achilles to all of these units. Softening them, weakening them. And Achilles has an ability which I neglected in my treatise on Troy a few days ago. But in a really meticulous tactical fight like this, when it's really sweaty, then that ability can make a big difference because it increases speed, which if synergized with runners, means that they can get a charge in faster. And sometimes seconds matter because although I am successfully pulling off something really absurd here, the AI is making an effort to protect its units. It's not sending units out one at a time. A unit will lead the charge, so they'll respond to my harassment with a unit, but then there's going to be a, th a threading of further units, which definitely makes this way, way more complex and difficult. And I'm trying to get these charges into the units as well. I've got runners there which have decent charge and a bonus for flanking, and I'm trying to isolate these units, have their backs turned, and get a clean, flat charge. And I just used the ability there to increase the speed and the charge, and I think that was a clean charge. I'm going for killing 10 or 15 or 20 guys and running out without taking any retaliatory damage. And it's working pretty much. That unit of young spears has lost 30 guys and is shaken and is looking really cut off. And I've got my Champions of Fia at the back there as a last bastion, a bulwark, in case I need to intervene if everything goes to shit. But what I'm doing here is actually aiming for near enough a perfect outcome. I've still taken no losses, and that's because Achilles is taking what little aggro there is. And just like that, they've routed. They were cut off, they were surrounded, they were charged in the rear. They had Achilles at the front of them, and they routed. And once they've routed, they are not 
dealing any damage to me. I just need to make sure that my highly mobile runners or javelin men can mop up and that's what happens. And then it's on to the next unit until the runners mop them up. So I'm trying to keep a unit out here ready to move on to next. And I'm trying to get a volley into the back of that unit spearman. 154 and they turned around 150 so their shields I think negated most of the damage there. And we're still chasing those guys that got shattered. And I'm trying to keep an eye on stamina as well. I'm trying to make sure that Achilles is always fresh so he can move fast. The last thing I want is to have a unit chasing him that's fresh while I'm tired and I can't get out of it and I don't have a unit nearby that can intervene. But look at that, they've got 115. So these javelins in the back are doing a lot of damage and the white bar for morale is going down so fast and they've shattered. So that's another one. I've got two units running and another one in pursuit trying to crash this party. <laughs> and I've still taken no losses. But this is looking precarious now. But I really want to chase these guys down. I'm being really cheeky here. But suddenly my unit just spread it out. What the fuck? They just ran. Oh man. I hate when they're not cohesive like that. God damn it. But it seems like they're all making it out. And I'm putting them right into the charge here. Oh man, yeah, this is really... Oh, and then they broke off. So this is looking really good. Oh man. But... Oh, I think I just did some friendly fire there. And yeah, I'm... How many have we lost? None. Still lost none. Holy shit. So Troy is really forgiven. Units can slip through each other and slip away. Definitely is forgiven in that sense. It's a bit like... Oh, and there, the first, the first man goes down. Oh man, that's the first one to go. It's all downhill from here. Oh shit, it's a slippery slope. Once the first one dies, they drop like flies. Put that on my gravestone. Alright, so now I've got three units out here. They're all coming... Uh, I've pulled them away really far. we get three units here and then a few more back. And this is what the Champions of the Year are for. But I really don't want a clusterfuck. I'm trying to keep my composure. I'm trying not to lose my shit because I've only lost one guy and I've taken out multiple units. And remember this is on Legendary and we're outnumbered vastly. So to only have one guy dead at this point is a feat no matter what. We're not using AOE explosives. We don't have Gatling guns. To have taken out entire units and only lost one man that's pretty good, so I'm going to keep going. And the Champions of Thea have high armor, high hit points per man, so they can tank a unit walking into it from the front that has crappy combat stats, especially if it's going to be broken within the next five or something seconds. And yeah, we just lost 250 hit points, which is probably something like one man's worth of health spread amongst the entire front line of the unit. So they are alright. They are unscathed. Yeah, 243 hit points out of 12,000, something, yeah. And I'm chasing now. The Aegean runners have 300 kills for one loss. That is a Thermopylae ratio right there. Not too shabby. But they're quite slow to kill the guys that are running. That's one of my gripes. I want more effective mop-up operations, especially seen as cavalry is so rare in this game. If you've got 150 guys running in amongst 100 guys that are just shitting their pants, legging it, they should be dropping hard. And that'll take a lot of the pain out of these fights when guys route without shattering, which they do a lot. And now we have Two units damage, three full units, and the two damage units are tempted to come out towards me. And I like how you can see the clouds moving over the ground. 
that gives me gladiator deja vu as well when he's dreaming about Elysium or having flash forwards to Elysium and you can see the shadow of the bird there as well there's a bird flying in the sky and you can just see yeah it's gone and now there's a cloud over my javelin and that was a good volley that was a high trajectory plunging volley at indirect fire and it still did a fuck ton of damage and look at the morale dropping holy shit those those javelins are brutal and i'm trying to get achilles the fuck out get out of there man and their morale is ready all i need to do is get oh yeah that was a rear volley holy shit they're gone they are gone Achilles, finish them. Yeah. <laughs> and do you see how you can dismantle units? If you take advantage of Achilles' unique properties, javelins to do damage from a distance, which slingers and archers can't really do, unfortunately. You need those short range massed armor piercing heavy damage volleys from javelins on this game as it currently stands all right we've got a unit of swords pulling down they're trying to go around my skirmishers that's interesting and i'm pulling out here because their hero is chasing my unit fucking bastard got another one fucking prick three guys dead he just got another one so, I've lost three men. Three losses. Fuck's sake. So, that little maneuver there just cost me two perfectly good Aegean runners. Those guys are beasts. And I cannot afford to lose them. They each have the ability to kill hundreds of guys. They are worth their weight in gold. They're better than the Balearix, better than the Numidians. I need to keep these guys throughout all my campaigns as Achilles because they are overpowered. The damage they can, whoops, deal to these armies when they're under Achilles who runs around randomly just stabbing guys with impunity pissing them off until they chase them, bringing them into these traps, these well laid schemes. I like how they push through the foliage, the flora, they leave a trail and look at that, that is so out of the film with Brad Pitt. That is the same goddamn choreography there. They nailed it. <laughs> and I've got two units chasing me now, but one of them is wavering. That's the young spears, and they're ready to go. So I just need to soften up these units here, and I can have a morale cascade. But I've not really been playing towards that. I've been trying to destroy all of these units. If I was to have weakened them all, then I could eventually just have morale cascaded them but I'm being really really thorough and brutal here and do you see how I pulled off I pulled off with perfect time in there pretty much one of your units has no more ammunition I let my unit tap the corner and do some damage but I pulled off just before they turned to face and now this is a bit contentious a bit dubious was that a well timed charge there maybe a little bit off I think I saw the health bar go down a little bit, but it's alright, because I've got time here. Achilles is deep in this unit. Nah, they've, yeah, they've regrouped. No, wait, wait. See how quickly things change, the circumstances, in this game? This is why you need groups. You need to be able to respond quickly. And I'm taking that charge. Nah, I'm not. You see, I really want to protect my three losses to the five or six hundred or whatever it is. <laughs> and Achilles is at the edge of the unit. But I'm pulling him out. He was doing damage there without really taking any. 
but it's not good enough. I need to pull that unit away because this is not getting anywhere. And see the morale going down as they get further separated. And look at this surround. Holy fuck, this is a brutal surround. And I take this charge, and I use the ability. No. Oh, now we do. 132 men. Taking a little bit of damage. Are they gonna break? Come on. Come on. Yeah, there they go. Oh man. We took no casualties to pull that off. That was so clean. If you can have an entire battle made of those manoeuvres, you're gonna get the outcome that I get here. It's just about managing the fight, pacing it, which you can do if you have fast units like Aegean Runners, Javelinmen, and you manage your hero properly. Alright, so we're getting ready for the next one. There's one guy left on that unit. That'll do. So we're winded. Winded, winded. Yeah. The Aegean Runners have really good stamina. They can run for so long. But Achilles... Uh, I'm just waiting right now. <laughs> yeah, so... Something I don't like... About... Total War games recently, and by recently I mean since Shogun 2, is hidden combat difficulty modifiers. That's the thing, I am playing this really sweatily and very exploitatively, taking advantage of game mechanics really ruthlessly, but if you take the fight evenly, and just do your best to conventionally fight it using decent micromanagement and tactics you will actually be punished by melee stat bonuses that the AI gets and it's been like that since Shogun 2 which doesn't have any so you're fighting a denatured fight no matter what if you play on legendary and this is the kind of stuff that you have to do to even the playing field and if you're gonna do any of this kind of stuff in for a penny in for a pound why not why not just be extremely sweaty why not just see just how far the limits can be pushed victory is close enough to taste why not just be extremely obsessively meticulous and attentive you're already going to have to stop taking your fights with a straight melee where you've collected as many advantages as possible. So you've got your guys on a hill, maybe in some trees, you've made sure that they're not tired, you've given them good support from the general who's got the right traits, the right ancillaries, got the right skill spec, and still you're fighting an uphill battle against an AI that has the wrong stats. Yeah. And in this game, it, it's really quite brutal. If you're playing on Legendary and have two units of Light Swords facing each other, player versus AI, the player will take casualties three times faster than the AI, which is really shocking. So you've got an even controlled fight, but the hidden combat modifiers that result from the difficulty setting mean that you have a kill-death ratio of 0 0.3 and the AI has a kill-death ratio of 3. That is extremely denatured. And what that means is that you just have to never take those fights because you're already playing on Legendary, so on the campaign map you're going to be outnumbered. So it's the opposite of what you need. You just cannot take those fights. So everything you do is going to revolve around playing in such a way as to avoid those fights. And that's exactly what I do here. How many seconds in this fight do I spend 
in a toe-to-toe, -to -toe, mano a mano brawl when the steel clashes with steel, which is quintessential to Total War. Just look at Shogun 2 with katanas. Oh man, it's it's the romantic ideal of Sengoku Jedi. The katanas crossing, or a katana and a naginata. You can't afford to do that. <laughs> It won't work! So, you've got to play like this. So it's just as well that it's possible, because in addition to having hidden combat modifiers that denature combat, you've also got these single entity units that totally perturb the battlefield away from these large scale fights with hundreds of men meeting each other as equals, except for the advantages that you collect for them and buy for them and give them from systems that are balanced. Instead, you've got to rely entirely on mechanics, often unintended. And it's definitely unintended that you have this much control over your units. But that's entirely separate from what I'm talking about. And look at this. Oh man. A three way perfect flank and another guy goes down there. That's my fourth my fourth one. My fourth and final man dropped. And all that remains is the enemy hero and a unit fragment with morale that barely exists. Oh wait, it's recovered somewhat. And here we go. Alright, what I'm thinking now is that if I charge in and finish them, I could take another 10 guys or something. <laughs> I could lose another 20 guys. So what I need to do is let my runners finish that chase, bring them back, show these guys how many I have alive, i.e. everyone, and have them run away from being totally overwhelmed and outnumbered. So that's what I'm going for, I'm being patient. Because I've been patient enough as it is, I've spent half an hour meticulously dismantling this army. So I'm gonna, you're damn right, I'm gonna wait. And Achilles is standing there regaining his stamina. Achilles himself has how many kills? The runners have 646 kills. 646 kills to 4 losses. That's a KD of a hundred and fucking fifty. God damn. Alright, so now I'm lining up. My champions of Thea are at full health. They are my strongest unit and they were not used. Didn't use the champions of... No wait, the champions of Thea had slight utilization. Didn't use the swordsmen. Didn't use the young spears. So, entire units that were not used. So I only really used three units to do all this. Only used three units. Could have done this with just three units. I could have disbanded half of my army and done just as well. Alright, here we go. And that does it. They're out. And the enemy hero's morale is already tanking. And now the idea is to just mob this guy. Fucking get in there. And I use the ability. And they make a circle. So I'm hoping that the circle means I won't take any aggro away from Achilles. So I want Achilles to be taking all the aggro while everyone else just screams in this guy's ear until he goes deaf and his head explodes and we get the win. Is it working? Yep, it works. Four losses. And I'm trying to see if I can catch that unit. To make it even more emphatic. Can we catch the unit? Can we catch them? Are my Aegean, Aegean runners actually that fast? Are they fast enough? Nah. Usain Bolt couldn't have caught them, so... Doesn't matter. And that guy is too tanky to take down. And that's it. Fucking four losses. Thanks to Achilles. 
mostly and my micro and that's why I don't play Warhammer Maybe I should. This is what a legend looks like. And that's it. Hopefully you found that interesting. I'm gonna keep playing this because Achilles who knows what else I'll find. And that is how you make a perfect start to an Achilles campaign. I have a Patreon page for if you like the videos enough to want to support their production. Special thanks to Matteo Olivetti, Nerdington, The Rode 451, Halcyon, William Ballangari, and Robert Sparks.